Good morning, 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 everybody. I hope everybody's day is off to a great start. I'm thankful to be in the land of the living this morning. I'm thankful to be amongst the living this morning. I'm thankful that God woke me up this morning and gave me another chance. So for those of y'all who don't know who I am, I am Grace Amber. I come on different platforms. Whenever God gives me a word to share, I come on and I share it with you. So really quick this morning, happy Thursday. I will be glad when it is Friday, five o'clock. I am ready for a break. So anyway, happy um, Thursday. Uh, I, I hope everybody had a wonderful morning. I hope your day is starting off great. I want to talk to you really quickly from the topic of the wonderful change, the wonderful change. I am still talking about being born again. And this is the last uh, video that I'm going to do to sum up this little series that I've been doing talking about being born again. Why am I talking about being born again? Because we as children of God keep hearing about the kingdom of God and we want to know how can we access the kingdom of God that is operating right now, right here on earth. And so Jesus told Nicodemus in John the third chapter, and I'll give you that scripture in a second. Jesus told Nicodemus that you can only see the kingdom of God unless you are born again, or if you are born again. Let me give you that scripture. Turn with me in your Bibles to John, the third chapter. I'm going to start at the first verse and it reads, now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to know Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him, right? Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. I'm going to spend that last verse back for you. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. What was Jesus saying in that last verse about the wind blowing wherever it pleases? Let's talk about the wind really quick so that we can make some comparison and understand what he was trying to say. So with the wind, we don't see it, right? When there is wind going on outside, we never see the wind, right? But we see the evidence that is there. We don't see the wind, but we can hear it. We don't know whether it's coming from up top, if it's coming from down below, the east, the west. We don't know where it's coming from. But what we do know is that it's present. And the way that we know it's present is because we see the evidence of it interacting with things in the environment. We see the evidence that something is influencing the leaves to make them go all around. We see the evidence that something is influencing the trees to make them go all around. We see the evidence that the wind is there because we hear the influence of the wind upside our house when we hear the wind coming against our house. We can't see the wind. However, we see the evidence of its influence when we see the sticks and the trash flying around outside. We we can't see the wind. We don't know where it's coming from. But one thing is for sure, we see the evidence of its influence in our environment. So Jesus said, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear a sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. Let's talk about the Holy Spirit. Do you see spirits with the naked eye? No, you don't. But I tell you what you can see. When the Holy Spirit comes in, you can see evidence that is there. And I'm going to tell you how. Tamala Man sings a song, A Wonderful Change Has Come Over Me. I don't dress the way I used to. I don't talk the way that I used to anymore. God changed me. Y'all know that song Tamala Man sings? I think that's another lady who sings it real good too. Her name is Crystal Rucker. So anyway, they sing this song talking about a wonderful change. And what she's talking about in the song is that a wonderful change has come over her. And she doesn't do the things that she used to do. Turn with me in your Bibles to, let's go back to Galatians, the fifth chapter. By the time y'all get done with me, y'all are going to know this by heart, right? Go with me to Galatians, the fifth chapter. And so when the Holy Spirit comes in, he comes in when you make an environment that is conducive to him being there. What do I mean? 
So you have started, we've been talking about being born again for the last five or six videos. And so I talked about how the first step is being saved because when you become saved, you're making a decision to choose and believe Jesus. You are making a decision to proclaim your belief in Jesus Christ, our Lord, and that he died and rose again on the third day, right? By you accepting Jesus, then guess what happens? Then you move on. There's some supernatural conception that takes place in the process of being born again, because by your opening your heart to Jesus and accepting Jesus, now not only does Jesus come in and love you, but God and the Holy Spirit comes in to love you, make a home with you, and the Holy Spirit teaches you the things that you need to know, right? There's also some other steps in that scripture in John the third chapter where he talks about being born of flesh, being born of spirit and water, I'm sorry. And the water I talked about in the last video or maybe a couple of videos before y'all got to go back and watch it. I talked about the water being not cleansing us from dirt, but in actuality, us taking a clear uh, pledge to God that we give him our heart. We submit ourselves to him. We not only accept Jesus, but we also make a pledge to the father, which is our God. Right. And then, um, he was talking about the spirit. And so we talked about the fruit of the spirit as well and how you can be born of the spirit. Well, if you're born of the spirit, guess what you do? You don't walk in the flesh. Instead, you walk in the spirit. I also talked about sowing time and about how after you make these uh, pledges and these decisions, right? After you make the decision to accept Jesus, after you do all those things, now it's sowing time where you sow seeds and what you want to do in the process of being born again is sow seeds from the spirit and not from the flesh. Because when it's harvest time, you're going to want the good harvest. You don't want the harvest of the flesh. You want the harvest of the spirit. Well, when you do all these things, you make an environment that is conducive for the Holy Spirit to come in and influence you. What do I mean an environment that is conducive? Well, let's say, for example, that you are, you have made a decision to be born again. You accepted Jesus. You know, you're saved. You have made a plan to God. But then when it comes to your walk, your walk is full of the acts of the flesh. Uh, Galatians, the fifth chapter in the 19th verse. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Well, if that's your lifestyle and that's your walk, that is an unclean lifestyle. So you make it difficult for God and the Holy Spirit to come dwell in some unclean place. God is a clean God. He does not, well, just like you wouldn't want to go. Uh, sometimes I go in these environments on my job. I, uh, I'll go in sometimes. It's uh, rat balls everywhere, trash everywhere. Bless their heart is their home. Not talking about them. But what I'm saying to you is, is that when you get into an environment like that, I didn't want to stay in that. First thing I want to do is hurry up and get up out of there. Why? Because it's an unclean place. And even though at my best, my best is as filthy rags to God, there's something in me that says that this is unclean. And listen, get in here and do what you got to do and get up out of here, right? And so it is with the Holy Spirit that we have to make sure that we make the environment conducive to the Holy Spirit to come in and not just come in to influence us. And when the Holy Spirit comes in and he influences us, guess what happens? All this sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Guess what happens? When the Holy Spirit comes in and influences us, guess what? We don't want those things anymore. When the Holy Spirit comes in and influences us, guess what? We despise those things. When the Holy Spirit comes in and influences us, guess what happens? We no longer have a desire to do the things and the acts of the flesh. Instead, a wonderful change comes over us and we begin to desire the fruit of the Spirit, which is... Uh, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against such things. There is no law. And how do you know when the Holy Spirit comes in? You know that the Holy Spirit is in there, not because you can see him, just like we can't see the wind. You can't see the Holy Spirit with your naked eye, but what you can see is the evidence of the influence that he has wherever he is on the environment or on the person that he is dwelling in or that it is dwelling in. You can see the influence of the Holy Spirit wherever it is dwelling. How can you? Because a wonderful change will take over wherever he dwells in or wherever it dwells in. If you want to say the Holy Spirit is not gender specific, whatever. But anyway, wherever the Holy Spirit dwells, you're going to see evidence of the influence. The person that you once knew who was doing all these things, shacking up, 
fighting in the street all the time, stealing, robbing, killing, doing all these acts of the flesh, going off on people, cutting people, stabbing people, doing all kinds of things, cussing people out, uh, promiscuous as I don't know what. When you see people doing the acts of the flesh, once the Holy Spirit comes in, you can't see where it came from. You can't see where it's going. But one thing you can see is just like the wind, you can see the evidence of the influence of the Holy Spirit wherever it is dwelling, okay? And so that is the last part of the process of being born again. From this point on, if you make, if you continue to commit your walk to walking with the Spirit, I like the way it says it in Galatians, uh, the fifth chapter, go down to the 25th verse. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And so once you have done these things, right, the Holy Spirit has come in, He's had an influence on you, you've had a wonderful change, then there's a maintenance process. And all you got to do is keep doing everything that you did to become born again. Keep doing that until you go see God, until you see your Heavenly Father, until you make it to the other side where you see Him. So long as you're here on earth, in order to maintain right standing with the kingdom of God, right? In order to maintain right standing with God, in order to maintain your status of being born again, all you've got to do is continue doing everything that you did to become born again, keep doing it and don't stop. And you will continue to remain in right standing with God, our father and the kingdom of God. I love you. I am Grace Amber. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm going to be right back on tomorrow. Good Lord willing with another word.